Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 20. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, go to my college website and you can download this workbook, Business 210, Chapter 2. Hey, this video we finally get to deal with quantitative data. Hey, what does quantitative mean? Hey, number. So we're going to build frequency distributions and cumulative frequency distributions and histograms based on variables like age. So we're going to start off, we're going to do a bunch of things. We're going to start off just seeing if we can calculate a frequency distribution. And uh, we're going to do all of these things. It's going to take a few videos based on formula and then charts. And then we'll see how to do uh, the same things with pivot tables. I'm going to scroll down in the data set we've been using this whole chapter. Sample of 200 sales from uh, www.boomerangs.com. And we've been dealing before this video with categorical data. So we were doing things like counting the number of products. But now we want to deal with variables like age and sales. So uh, the, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build a frequency distribution based on age. So we're going to say like uh, between 15 and 20 years old, how many did they buy? Between 20 and 25 year olds, how many? did they buy? Now, the problem is, if you have a data set like this, how in the world do you decide uh, how to group ages? Uh, we're going to scroll over here. We're going to see how to do that. We're going to see how to do that. Uh, and this textbook that we're using for this class, I like it because it, it, it tells the truth about this. I have these little notes over here. Uh, certain parts of uh, deciding how to group data, how big should the class be? Should we go from 15 to 20 years old or should we go from 15 to 25 years old? It's all art. This is the art side of statistics. And this book kind of lays that on the line. It doesn't give us a, a set of, of rules that we have to follow. It just goes, hey, this is a judgment call. <laughs> this is a judgment call. This is a judgment call. We will look at a, a few rules that will help us decide. And actually, uh, we will do this same aged group frequency table with formulas and pivot tables. And we'll get to the pivot table. We'll group them differently and just see how what patterns we can see differently. All right, the first thing we have to do is count uh, the number of ages we have. So we're going to say equals count. Uh, open parenthesis, and we're going to scroll over to that field. And in fact, I'm going to hit Escape. And I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to point to J column. And I'm going to click and drag click and drag, trick, click and drag, until I get to coupon. So I've highlighted from D to J. And then somewhere in there, right click the column header and point to hide. That's going to be much better. It's still all there. See, the alphabet doesn't go A, B, C, K, L, M. There's a bunch of hidden rows. That's how you can tell that there's hidden rows. Now it's easy to just grab our data. I'm going to click right there, equals count. And what are the values? I'm going to click in the top one and Control Shift, and then hit the down arrow. And although we're not going to copy this anywhere, I'm going to hit the F4 key because that jumps the screen back up. And then Enter 200. Now we need to find the max because obviously, if we're going to be to build a frequency distribution where we're going to group ages, we need to have categories like 15 to 20 years that include uh, the min and the max. So if we built our categories like if we started at 20 years old and we had an 18 year old, forget it. Not going to work. We're not going to, uh, the categories would not be collectively exhaustive. It means we wouldn't have enough categories. So we need to figure out the max and the min, and that'll help us decide. Um, what size and how many categories equals max open parentheses click on the top control shift down arrow f4 close parentheses here's a trick let's just highlight this range right here in that close parentheses and control c and then hit enter now i'm going to do min equals min and then control v to paste that range so the min. Now we need to calculate the range, because if we're going to build classes, um, the bottom class to the top class better have the entire range of values. And what's range? Just max times min. So we're going to say equals max times min. 
Now, number of classes. This is a total judgment call. Um, we have 200. Um, so let's start off with 8. Now, here's the a useful um, recipe. And this textbook doesn't give this. this uh, but this is a, a useful recipe. Two, the, the number two raised to whatever uh, number of classes we decide, that's got to be greater than or equal to our uh, count. So if I put uh, five here, is uh, two to the fifth is 32. Is 32 greater than or equal to uh, 200? No, it's not. Now, actually, five or six classes might be perfect for this because um, we wouldn't want to have like uneven rough groups like 18 to 27. We probably want to stick with age by the fives or the tens. But um, let's go ahead and put um, uh, 10 here. 10 here. Whoa, 1,024. Uh, now, the way you check to see if this is true or not, I have a little formula here that's concatenating, but there's a simpler formula to check. So if you have five here, you want the, a formula to tell you, no, that's not enough according to this recipe. And here's the formula, equals two, and we've got to use our caret, which is shift six, that's exponent. Caret, whatever's in that cell, has to be greater than or equal to this. Hey, that's a true false formula. If I hit Enter, it says false. And so I could try 6, Control Enter, 7, Control Enter, 8, Control Enter. Finally, that's the first value that's bigger. Now, approximate uh, class, approximate class. Um, I'm going to click right here. It looks like I don't have this. <coughs> I double click between 27 and 28. There's the uh, formula for uh, approximate class width. Just using common sense here, right? If you're going to have eight classes, which means we're going to have eight groups, and then count in those groups how many people bought boomerangs. Uh, here's the range, 47. Just using common sense, 47 divided by 8, that would be the approximate class width. That would be the absolute minimum we could have. So let's do that here. Equals 47 divided by 8. And then enter. Now here's the problem we're going to run into <clears throat> with this data set. If we're going to group things, I don't want to have 5.875 to 10.875. We need to, and this is the art side of it, you need to, to make it easy to, and to see the, the patterns in the data. You don't want people struggling with the rough numbers. So uh, class with here, you could, you know, and with age, it's either going to be 5 or 10. So um, here we have to look here and decide, well, if we're going to use 8, we can't have 5 because that would be too small. We could use 8, but it would be too rough. I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to try 10 here, 10 classes. It's still bigger. Oh, that's 5. right? Then that means the approximate class width is um, less than 5, so we could use 5. That seems like an OK one. Let's try 11 up here. 4.2. And as it turns out, we will have to use 11 because we're going to have groups from the, the minimum is 18. And if we go from, uh, we need to inco incorporate that. So if we start at 5 and we're going uh, 15 and going by 5, we would have 15 to 20. And then the very last class, we'd have to have 65 all the way up to 70. So 11 is what we're going to need. And that just is the art of it and the judgment. You really, the only way you can do that is just by trying it and doing it. Uh, and you can change it later. All right, class width, we're going to say 5, enter. And then actual range, oh, look, look at that. I accidentally uh, made these rows to. Uh, not tall enough. So you can come between 29 and 30 and double click. All right, uh, actual range. Well, this is common sense too, right? Uh, whatever the class width we decided times our k, that actually has to be our total range. So let's click here. Equals 11 times 5. Enter. 55. That's going to be to the total uh, range. Now, how do you decide the lower limit of the first class? Again, this is a judgment call. Well, it better be 18 or lower. And since we've decided on 5, and later in our pivot table, I think we'll do 10, because those are kind of the two uh, easiest numbers to use with, with these years for people to quickly see the patterns. 
Uh, so if this is 18, the only thing we can really do is go down to 15, so it'll be 15 to 20. So I'm going to say 15 here. All right, that's how to get the raw data. When we come back in a moment, we'll see how to construct uh, the frequency distribution and the labels and everything for our uh, charts. All right, see you next video.